It's time to bring the Macomb Township Planning Commission meeting to order. Today is Tuesday, September 3rd, 2019. Please stand for the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Yes, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Shuto. Here. Mr. Provenzano. Here. Mr. Oliver. Here. Mr. Tuckfield is present. Mr. Hardy. Here. Mr. Bentley. Mr. Bentley told me that he wasn't going to make it tonight, or he it was possible that he was going to make it, but it looks like he didn't make it. Okay. So. Very good. Mr. Krasminski. Here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, all members uh, are present, save Mr. Bentley, who I believe is absent and excused. Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Yes, sir. Like to make a motion, we exclude Member Bentley from any roll call votes. Support. Motion by Mr. Schuto, supported by Mr. Hardy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Approval of the July 16, 2000 meeting minutes. Mr. Chairman, if there's no additions, deletions, or correction, I make a motion we accept the meeting minutes as read. Motion by Mr. Schuto to accept the meeting minutes. Support. Supported by Mr. Provenzano. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Approval of the agenda. Mr. Chairman, if there's no discussion or, or correction for the agenda, move to approve it as received. Motion by Mr. Kruzminski. Support. Supported by Mr. Schuto. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Item six, new business. Six A, preliminary plan, Riverview Estate, site condominium, Pers permanent parcel, 08172010010, located on the south side of 24 Mile Road. East of Romeo Plank Road, Section 17, Riverview Estates, LLC Petitioner, Mr. Maher. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with regard to uh, uh, Riverview, the uh, subdivision is fairly uh, straightforward and um, meets all of our lot sizes. The road pattern uh, makes sense, and all the department heads at this point are recommending approval. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, questions on this item? And Mr. Chairman, just uh, briefly, this, uh, this will be a recommendation to the Township Board. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I did have a couple questions, and I'd just like to note, uh, generally, I, I leave these for after the public comments. However, I was, it was requested uh, that I bring them up earlier, so I just want to make sure that I mention that it's out of my normal rhythm, but for no negative reason, just that it was requested that I do them in a different order. Um, I had a couple of questions. Uh, one would be on lot four, Mr. Maher. It looked like that might exceed our width to the depth ratio. Um, just wondered if there was, if I was calculating that correctly or if there was an exception to that. I don't have my plans open, but it's at the end of the reports where they typically uh, go along. That's the 45,828? Uh, I don't know. I don't have mine open. My apologies. Okay. It's okay. That's a square foot. Unfortunately, I don't have my scale with me. If um, if, if it looks close to you, I mean, I'd, I'd take your recommendation. I just want to make sure that you guys were aware of it and that it wasn't gotten missed. We can certainly take a look at it. We're in preliminary approval right now, okay. so we can certainly have them adjusted if it doesn't. But it looks real close if if it doesn't. Okay. Um, 
if that could be looked at, I'd appreciate it. I'm, obviously, I, I follow your judgment on whether it meets it. Those particular lots always confuse me on how to calculate them. Anyhow, I know I've asked you uh, uh, many times on how to properly calculate them, and I never retain the understanding. Yeah, we, we just conferenced, and we are comfortable that it does meet it. Okay, very good. Um, the second uh, question I had, uh, I think the second two might be directed to Mr. Van Tiflin as well, and I, I mentioned this to Mr. Van Tiflin before the meeting. Typically, I try to ask these questions before the meeting, and I apologize I was not able to do so. Um, there was a note in Mr. Van, Tiflin, Mr. Van Tiflin's review. I should have marked where it was, but it noted that when you, they were doing wetland mitigation, that it would require a special land use and a separate permit. I'm not an expert on it by any means, but it looked like they were doing some wetland mitigation to the east of the property. Is that accurate? Is it, are they going to be coming forward for a, for a special land use, or how would that work? It might be a, a question for the engineer who's here, but. Um, these mitigation areas have been proposed on this particular um, area of the floodplain along the river from the beginning of, you know, the original development of Bridgewater on the east side of the river. Um, I don't know that they're planning on doing any of that with this. It's not indicated. It just says it's, it's a, a proposed mitigation area. They it's may on the drawing, but it's not associated with the development. That's as far as I know, unless... Okay. Well, I can then ask him when it yep. comes up there. And then the last question I had, I believe this does not come a lot under our heading, but uh, I noticed the location of the pump station. And again, I don't have my drawing out. My apologies. I'm trying to spare our microphones. Uh, our, our recording engineer asked us to be more careful of it. Um, it. It looked like it was relatively close, close to some of the residential areas. Um, I don't know if there's room on the parcel to put any further or different way. I just know from personal experience, I don't, I don't know the difference of the relative size or if it makes a difference, but I live very near a pump station on 21 Mile Road between Heidenreich and Romeo Plank. I walk across the street from it on a nightly basis, and on any night that's warmer than 80 to 85 degrees, I can clearly smell the pump station from 400, 500 feet. I don't know if there's a difference in size, but is this going to be an issue for the houses? Is there another place they can possibly put it within reason? At this point, the pump station hasn't been formally requested of the developer, so we haven't looked at any of the design criterion yet. Um, you know, could they find another spot for it? Sure. You know, that, that very well could be. Originally, the pump station, I think, was on the roadside of the drain, and then they went and relocated the drain a number of years ago. Um, the pump station that you're referring to is a very large pump station, relatively speaking. This is a small one, which could work in our favor, might work against us, depending on how long the product sits in the pump station. It can get septic and can smell, um, but it doesn't create as much of that um, venting okay. um, than a larger pump station that has a lot of flow going into it and has surges and, and so on. So. Those are all design, design things that we will look at once we actually start that, okay. that process. I'm not even sure that we can fit everything into this area that they've designated on the, on the property, but that's what we're going to, that's the next step is to go into all that detailed engineering. They may have to modify this. Figure out how to change it if necessary. Okay, very good. As long as you're aware of that concern, that was, again, I trust you guys just want to bring it up as a, as a concern. Yeah. And that was all I had, Mr. Chairman. Anyone else? Questions? Petitioner in the audience. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Name and address, please. John Thompson, PEA, 2430 Rochester Court, Troy, Michigan, representing Riverview Estates, LLC. Anything you want to add to this? Uh, no, I'm comfortable with everything in the reviews and uh, as presented. Commissioners, have any questions? Okay, this time I'll bring it to the public. Anyone in the public have anything on this item? Ma'am, uh, come just come to the podium. You can no, no, you sir. Can, sir, you can stay there. Yep. Hello, my name is Deborah Otto. I live at Silver Pines Village Condominiums at 24 and Romeo Plank. I only have one question. Seeing that it took me almost 15 minutes to make a left-hand turn onto Romeo Plank to come here, 
where is the construction entrance going to be for this development? I, I don't think that's probably decided yet. Decided yet because we're at our preliminary. Am I correct on it, Mr. Van Tiflin? They they will work that out with the township and with yeah. the county at the time that they're okay. going through their engineering. That that seems to be the main concern for the residents there is that we only have the one entrance and exit there. And it's so difficult right at the current time to get out. So if yeah. you consider that aspect, we So far we've been pretty successful with our developers on mm -hmm. working with the public as they're building the project. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, bring it back for comments, motions. Mr. Chairman, if there's no further comments, uh, I'd like to make a motion to recommend the preliminary plan of the Riverview Estate Site Condominium, permanent parcel 08172010. Uh, Riverview Estates LLC petitioner uh, for approval to the Board of Trustees based upon the uh, meeting all of the pertinent ordinances and the reviews done by our department heads. Motion by Mr. Tuckfield. Support. Approve the recommendation. Mis uh, second by Mr. Hardy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. 6B, ground sign mobile gas station, permanent parcel 0834 351 located on northeast corner of Hall Road and Heinrich Road, section 34. Andrew Mazur, petitioner. Mr. Maher. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, with regard to the uh, mobile gas station sign request, uh, we found that it met the township height requirement of seven feet, that the sign met the 10-foot setback from Heidenreich Road right away, and that the sign meets the uh, area requirements of 25 square feet. Um, the site is addressed to Hall Road, so I'm not sure if it would be a good idea to require an address on this because the actual site is addressed to Hall Road. Um, that being said, we are recommending approval of the sign as presented. Petitioner in the, in the audience on this item. Name and address, please. Andrew Mazur, 20502, Oklahoma, Michigan, 4044. Anything you want to add to this? No, everything looks good. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Questions. Uh, sir, could you, if you could move the microphone and say your name again, please. Andrew Mazur. Andrew Mazur. Okay, thank, right. thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yep. Commissioners, I have any questions on this item? Mr. Chairman, I did have one uh, to, I think, Mr. Maher. Mr. Maher, does this, this appears to have a message reader on it. It looks like it might be electronic in nature. That uh, fits with our ordinance as it stands? Yes, it does. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anyone else? Okay, this time I'll bring to the public. Does anyone in the public have anything on this item? Being none, bring it back to the board for comments and motions. Mr. Chairman, if there's no further discussion, I move to approve the ground sign for mobile gas station as presented. Motion by Mr. Kurzminski to approve the ground sign as presented. Support. Support by Mr. Schuder. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Item seven, old business. Mr. Maher. Uh, no old business from me, Mr. Chairman. No business. All right. uh, I was asked uh, prior to the uh, meeting about the uh, sign ordinance, um, and uh, completely had forgotten about that, so I'll try to email a copy of that over to Becky so she can email it out to you guys for discussion. Thank you. Okay. All right, item eight, public comments, non-agenda items. Does anyone in public have anything? Pertain to the township, sir, come to the podium.
My name's Kerry Dugan. Uh, need my address? Yep. 21530 Armada Center Road, Armada, Michigan, 48005. I represent Wind Surf and Sail Pools, and why we're here is we'd like the, the board to take a look at the impervious uh, percentages that they're allowing for extra patio in our concrete of our pools. People in small uh, lots are having a lot of problem with that, even with brand new homes. They're not able to do the size patios that they want to do. And where there are pools, we're not able to uh, build any closer than three and a half feet off the property line. And normally that's with retainer walls, so we're really not altering the original drainage to the catch basins. And this has put a hardship on some of our customers. I have a lady here that we're doing a pool for right now, Miss uh, Kim, and she, uh, she's got a brand new house and she's not gonna be able to do the patio that she wants to do with the, the, with the code the way it is in, in, in order. And it doesn't seem to affect people with large lots, but the 70 by 120s and stuff are really at a hardship with this. We'd like the city to take a look at that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening, gentlemen, folks. Justin Athemu, 5020. Back up on that name. Justin Athemu. Okay. E F T H E M I O U. Thank you. 50205 Nantwich. I'm here just what that gentleman was uh, indicating. We have a smaller lot. We moved here approximately four years, five months ago. And uh, when we moved here, there was not any regulations in place for the 50% rule, which from what I understand, that's what it is. 50% improved areas, 50% natural areas. So we put in a patio when we first moved here. So I wanted uh, the home and the area around it to look nice. It's a nicer neighborhood. And then we decided last year to get a pool. Well, we had to wait for the timing to be right. And so it is right. We use custom in ground pools as our final decider. And when he drew everything up, we're at 52.8%. So that said, because I have a smaller lot, we're now suffering because we can't have an area for the kids to sit around the pool because I poured a nice patio in the, in the front area with a nice landscape block that was all poured and also poured a sidewalk going to the back of the house. So now in order to get the pool, they want me to rip the sidewalk out or sacrifice seating area. So I'm, I'm kind of in a conundrum here because that's definitely not going to work. And we're talking less than 3%, which, yeah, it's 300 square foot, but it's not a lot in the long run. So that's why I'm here pleading my case with you folks to maybe get some understanding. And I definitely don't want to go to circuit court and go through all the, the, the hoops I would have to go through to get 3%. So I'm here, same as this gentleman. Um, Pleading my case before you folks. Okay. There would be nothing that we could do tonight I, I with this situation. I completely understand that. Yeah. I, I completely understand. But we're aware of it. Um, we've, I've talked to uh, Mr. Maples. I've talked to uh, Mr. Mahar. talked to Mr. Uh, Mr. Van Templin. And uh, it's something that we're going to have to work through. That'd be great. But there's no promises. It, it's going to go the way... The department heads are going to look at it and, and make the decision for the whole community. And it's just going to go, that's the way it's going to go. Well, that's why we have government now. Excuse me? I said that's why we have government. That's right. Huh. That's right. Believe but, me, I work for the federal government. So but I there's understand. been there's been cases where on our ordinance that we've seen them and we've seen that we've had to adjust them or do something else. I'm not saying uh, just adjust, adjust the ordinance, but do something with it. Um, so we're going to look at this one, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Yep. Um, the gentleman had just come up before you. We had a couple of years ago, I think, we worked on an ordinance with him on um, the mechanical equipment. So Great. So yeah, That's why I'm here. Believe okay. my case. All right. Thank you for your time, folks. Thank you. Thank you. For coming. Thank you. Ma'am. Good evening, my name is uh, Kim Cervolo. Uh, I'm new to uh, Macomb Township. Uh, I moved from the city of Warren and we're at 55273 Demerit Drive in Wolverine Country Club Estates. Uh, Carrie uh, is our uh, pool person and I just wanna let you know what 
with the 50% rule, I have a small lot, I have 8,400 square feet, um, so 50% of that, you know, do the math. Then, then when you do all, add in all about the impervious surfaces and stuff, it comes to like 37, 3,800, okay? So then you take, you know, my three feet around the pool and the coping that has, that has to go on, that leaves us about 180 square feet to put in a walkway, which we can't do, to go from the front yard to the backyard. So people will have to go through my home to get to the back of the pool. We cannot even put a porch with steps going down to the pool because we will be over the 50%. So with the small lots, 50% is a huge chunk as compared to a great big lot. So I'm at my wit's end, my husband and I are at our wit's end trying to figure out how we're gonna get this completed, get our sod in, get our sprinklers in, but we're at a standstill right now because we've, we don't know what we can do to do it. I mean, we can't even, how are we gonna get to our pool? We can put the three foot around and we can put the coping on and that's it because we, do, we will be over. So we won't we won't uh, get uh, you know get uh, meet that fifty percent. We've also have a, a snowman all lined up, and now we've talked with um, Joe, and uh, there's a possibility we're looking at permeable pavers and stuff. So that's another thing that we would like you to look at to see if that is something that that will be allowed. I, we don't know, is it the drainage that, that everybody's concerned with, the runoff? You know, we have two, I guess, I don't know, I call them manholes or drains, you know, on either side of our, our, our lot and stuff. So um, if you could please look at that and take into consideration, as this gentleman said here about the, the smaller lots and then the uh, impervious versus uh, permeable uh, brick pavers. I would appreciate that because right now we're at a standstill and we got to get we got to get something done with the pool so we can get the rest of our uh, sod in and things because you know we're under scrutiny from the uh, uh, association because you have a certain amount of time to get your sprinklers in your your sod in you know without being in violation there so yeah. I would appreciate your concern over this matter okay. thank you thank you Come back to the podium, please. I just wanted to add something in this particular case with Kim Servino. Uh, her door wall, by the way, is approximately four feet off grade, and there's not room for stairs, patio coming down, or anything with that either. I mean, I don't know what she's going to do with this. I really hope that you folks will take a good look at this. I appreciate your time and effort in this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Okay, close the public uh, portion of this and go on to the next item. Commissioner's comments. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Maher for working on our sign ordinance. I talked to him before the meeting in uh, he said he's working on com combining ours in Washington Townships, and I think that would be a good fit for us. And as he said, he's going to email it to us. So I thank him for his prompt attention to our matter, and I'm sure we'll get through this. Okay. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd just like to make a comment with regard to the impervious surface stuff that we just heard. Um, I do think it's something that is worth looking into. I don't know what the result would be. Um, I know that at the ZBA we saw a, uh, an attempt to have a variance on it. it. As it turned out, it was not appropriate because it's not in the zoning ordinance and therefore we did not have jurisdiction over it. But I think besides um, having another look at it, I think that it should at least be moved or, or allowed to have some type of appeals process, be it be to the Board of Trustees or, or a department head or something of that nature, just because there's situations that even if 50% is the perfect number, there are situations where it may not make sense. Uh, so I, I think besides just the, uh, the problem which is being described, I think that would also make sense. Uh, secondarily, and I'm more on the issue that uh, I think Mr. Dugan and others brought up, 
um, I think this plays into a conversation we need to have with the master plan, and that is that most of the houses that we're seeing built right now are, ex are using most of the envelope, and we are continually seeing people who are having a hard time fitting in porches and pools and sunrooms and other things of that nature. I don't know what the solution is. Maybe we're at the right place. We have people buying pretty expensive homes, mm -hmm. and then they can't put on investments that they want to put on that would raise their home value and make it more pleasurable for them, raise the home value of the people around them. So I don't know what the solution is, but I think it's an issue that we do need to look into both in this specific instance and then more systemically as we're going forward with our master plan stuff. And that was all I had. Thank you. Anyone else? If none, um, item number 10, Macomb Township Board of Trustees Liaison Update. Mr. Krasinski. There wasn't, any, there wasn't any planning items that came up for the last couple of weeks. Got to ask you. I know that. Thank you. Item 11, the ZBA Liaison Update. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, we have had one item at last month's meeting, which got postponed to the meeting this coming Thursday. Um, it's regarding the uh, child care center at 22 and card. Uh, the petitioners came in with several requests, including um, parking changes and fencing changes. I believe that I saw the agenda changed. Not all of those items may end up being up for uh, consideration. I believe the parking may have been withdrawn. Uh, but we're taking a look at that. They, they were having a hard time fitting the parking in, and there's some existing fencing that there's some uh, disagreements about how best to incorporate it with the surrounding properties. So uh, we're going to take a look at that. I don't know which way it's going to go, but uh, they seem to be moving along with the parcel, and we're going to do our best to make sure we, we help and do the right things needed. Hey, and that was it. On that item, have they opened any part of that ch child care center? Uh, this is the standalone part one on 22 and card, not not the one in not the, the complex. Not the one in the strip center. That okay. is correct. All right. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's it's still it's still clean land at the moment. Yep. All righty. Thank you. Planning departments. Anything, Mr. Maher? I have nothing else, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Can I ask a question, Mr. Chair? Go ahead. Oh, I know I should have done it in the yeah, commissioner's. Yeah. <laughs> I'm That's sorry. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so as a commissioner, I've always been under the impression that we have to, if it meets the ordinance, we approve it. If it doesn't, we deny it. So with regard to what we've heard tonight about the pools, and I agree with Aaron, it's, you know, people are trying to put investments that they like. Can we, in this body, um, take a look at things on a case-by-case -case basis and just change them? Or do, is it the ordinance that's got to be changed? And if that's the case, I mean, I heard us discussing that we could do things on a case-by-case -case basis. I, I'm just, can we do that? Mr. Sorry, if I could ask the legal, uh, is it possible to do that? So on a, on a variance request or is the approval process? I'm, I'm not yeah, sure I guess it's asking. the approval process. I guess there's some there's within reason on on some approval process. For instance, of a plan, you could allow you could allow certain things. For instance, on the on the the um, site kind of mini approval tonight, you could allow certain things. That's what the approval process is for. So if the building inspector went out and it didn't meet the fifty percent, he couldn't approve it, correct? That is correct. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Chairman, if I could, yeah. if, if people remember the portion of the ordinance that refers to floor height on a corner, I believe Mr. Van Tiflin, and correct me if I'm wrong, he has the ability to grant a waiver on that particular portion of the, of the requirements. I don't know if it's doable, but that was the type of approval I was thinking of, where there's, there's some sort of guidelines given and it's an administrative approval as opposed to a board approval. It may not be appropriate in this case. It just occurs to me that it might be something that would be worth talking about in that regard. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, obviously um, through discussion, it sounds like there's uh, somewhat of a desire to look at some type of variance proceeding for this. So we can certainly write that up whereby the ZBA can hear those cases. Right. The, um, you know, just to go back to the or or origin of um, putting this in, we were having a horrible problem with neighbor complaints on the opposite side of that, which is 
my neighbor paved their entire backyard and my neighbor uh, did this and you know my neighbor's got concrete all over um, it's got three uh, three driveways uh, all that type of stuff was occurring so we re-examined um, that as part of the residential concrete ordinance now you know, cert certainly we can put a, um, a separate standard in there for how these things can be regulated because typically there's not going to be a practical difficulty other than to say, mm -hmm. I have less than a 70 by 120 lot. Right. So um, we would have to put some type of standard for reasonableness that the ZBA could get a little bit away from the zoning ordinance standard for a um, practical <coughs> difficulty. Yeah. Because most of them wouldn't meet a practical difficulty. I can't think of many examples where they would. Maybe, uh, you know, a 60-foot lot, which uh, is not common within the community. But, um, you know, certainly we can look at that. We, uh, we spent a lot of time studying the lots within the community, taking the aerials, measuring concrete, um, trying to figure out what would be... Um, generous but at the same time uh, not overly generous and it seemed that many of the lots we ran into um, had a heck of a lot of uh, impervious surface on them and um, due to that uh, not a whole lot of landscaping so while the homeowner themselves may enjoy a quite quite a bit of that there is a fairness also that has to be looked at to the neighbors as well you know, so I, I'm not sure that adjusting the actual percentage is necessary, but I, I would agree that uh, there's certainly room for a, a variance procedure. And we could write something up and get that to you for your next meeting. Great. Mr. Chairman, if I may, just is there a, uh, a standard pool that goes in, into a lot or do you, you know, like five by five or whatever, can they shrink the, the pool or is it a whatever the standard is, and I don't know it's, that. That's it's typically not the pool that's the issue. We, we don't count that as part of the impervious surface. Okay. It's usually the um, concrete around it, and in many cases there's a large patio existing. When the pool goes in, they want a large patio added to the edge or the end of the pool, um, which, which makes sense. But at the same time, there's a lot of, a lot of pavement in, in many cases. But we can look at the impervious uh, pavers as well and uh, see how those might fit into the ordinance but again I, I think you do want a little bit of a balance between you know aesthetics drainage and enjoyment of your yard so we'll try to put something together that addresses those three I get a question from Mr. Van Tilflin just so I'm clear our biggest concern is drainage Getting water to to not pool because it's been concreted over. Yes, that that's always a concern when any, if anybody makes an improvement to their property. Um, from an engineering standpoint, that's where I want I I look at is where's the water going to go. Um, but you know there is a aesthetic, you know aspect to this that you know the neighbor doesn't want to look at, you know the par property next door and it's nothing but concrete even if it's. Imper uh, the porous pavers that allows the water to go through, you're still seeing a hard surface. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. I got, could I ask Mr. Maples to come here? I got just one quick question for you. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, Mr. Maples, generally when, when, this come, when this issue comes to surface, what time does it come to surface? After the house is built, after the patio is built, and then they need something else? Yes, um, at the time of the house building, most of um, the houses are, uh, if they maximize them, it's 35% lot coverage. So then you're only left with 15 to do everything else. Um, the three car garages, the width of the driveways, um, all come into effect. Um, your walkway up to your front porch, including your front porch. Um, then people want walkways down the side to get, like the young lady said there, um, to get to the back of the house without, you know, just walking through the house or trampling down the side um, on the side of the house. 
then on the back you usually have a door wall have to have steps and um, uh, a pad to get out on and you know some area in the back whether it's a deck or whether it's uh, concrete it will be considered uh, impervious here so that is basically after the fact when they start putting the decks and the patios the walks down the side the pools um, is after the fact okay so it's, it's usually right after um, you know they get the they get in the house they make it a temp c of o to get in um but it's right after that is is there any way that that residents can be forewarned of this is all you got left to put impervious material down uh, so we don't get to this point where where they would know earlier what they can do and what they can't do I mean, we, we can allow them. We have required um, on all new houses that come in when they submit the plot plans to provide us the amount of lot coverage and the amount of impervious surface, knowing that um, the 50% is the maximum. So, I mean, we'll, we'll they have know all that. In. Coming in. Um, they, they do now coming in because since the ordinance was changed, um, we, we asked that all the... Um, surveyors when they submit the plot plans uh, put that on there okay thank you but some of these are you know they're, they're spec houses that are already built and then yep. people buy them so they, they don't know a lot of it yeah okay appreciate it mm -hmm. thank you okay thank you we good mr chairman i did just have one question i'm not sure if this is to mr maples D did i understand what you were saying there that uh, decks are currently classified as a impervious surface it's uh, part of the impervious surface, yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All righty. Planning department's uh, done. Anything else, Mr. Maher? No, sir. Good to go. Thank you. All right. Motion is adjourned. So moved. Motion by Mr. Schudel. Support. Support by Mr. Hardy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. Sorry.